So there's a wedding happening nearby. <laughs> We're all hearing the <laughs> so reminding us of the covenant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Valentine's Day. Yeah. Okay, let's pray. <laughs> Father, we, we just want to thank you for the covenant, Lord. We thank you for the new covenant. We thank you for what you have accomplished on the cross. Lord, we thank you that we are recipients, Lord, today. And we can, Lord, be recipients of the blessings, Father God. Uh, recipients of every curse that has been broken, Father God. And uh, thank you for releasing us to walk in blessing. And Master, we thank you that uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually, relationally, uh, materially, in all aspects, Father God, that we are blessed because of the finished work of the Lord on the cross. And Master, we, we are so grateful for what you did for each one of us, Lord. And uh, yes, Lord, even as we <clears throat> Lord, choose to be aware of it, recognize it, uh, recognize this truth, and Lord, we pray that each one of us will walk in the blessing walk in the blessings of Abraham, Lord, um, that we will be called friends of God, that we will walk in greater faith, that we will walk in material blessing, that, uh, Lord, that we will walk as overcomers of all the enemies, God. Um, Father, we pray that we will walk in the blessings of Abraham, Lord. Uh, let it be so, Father God. Let it not be as just one day thing, but let it be a journey of uh, walking in blessings. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we, we um, yeah, let's just pick up from where we stopped. Uh, we looked at, um, okay, we looked at the last uh, four steps also, right? Um, about ongoing lifestyle changes for us to have uh, uh, inner wholeness or healing and um, healing and deliverance, right? Um, yeah, we looked at, I think the last thing that we saw was uh, that, that we need to learn and develop some new skills. Uh, or develop skills that we need for a fruitful life. And these need, need not be quote-unquote sp spiritual, right? So these, these can be management of time. These can be some professional skills. But these also help in reducing, you know, what we can call as uh, stress or stress-related, you know, lifestyle or stress-related things that um, a, a stress-related breakdown of things that happen in our life. So we can actually, you know, walk in the fullness. Uh, you know, this is one one more thing that we need to look at. You know, what are some skills that I need, right? And if some activity stresses me out because of the lack of skills, then which means that I can actually improve my skills in order to overcome that, you know, that stress level which uh, emotionally brings me down, right? Okay. Okay, so now we're going to look at um, uh, the next one, which is journeying into emotional wholeness, right? And uh, we're just going to look at three things that are important, or three main pillars uh, for us to, you know, walk in um, journey. Uh, sorry, kind of journeying into emotional wholeness, and certain things that we need to live consistently. Okay, so here are some truths. First one, simple one. But a very important one is that we need to receive the Father's love, God's love, okay? Um, because we, we read so much about it, um, that God so loved, that he gave, and also that um, while we were yet sinners, he died on the cross. Romans 5 talks about that and uh, the amazing uh, love that he has for us, right? And the way he chose us and so on. But uh, the thing is this, that, like we said, you know, we we might be punishing ourselves. We might be, you know, hating ourselves so much, so much that we are, you know, we are regretting whatever we did. We are blaming ourselves for whatever happened, and we are not looking at God's love, right? Not looking at God's love. We intellectually kind of agree God loves, right? We kind of agree that God's love, God, God loves the world. John 3, 16, God so loved the world, right? It's always outside. Right? Forget that hey, I'm also part of it. Right? I'm also part of that world which God loved and God loves. And therefore, you know, I'm also loved by God intensely, right? So that's, um, you know, that's, that's the truth. And when we receive that truth, right? When we receive the truth, we receive God's love. 
when we receive god's love a lot of other things actually uh, go away right for example um, scripture talks about how perfect love casts out all fear right okay let's look at 1 john 4 okay um 1 john 4 verse 18 it says um, there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment but he who fears has not been made perfect in love we love him because he first loved us so it says that you know this perfect love casts out okay which means that when this when we receive this perfect love uh of god when we when it really you know uh influences or affects our mind our imagination and everything there's a there's a consequence for that or something happens because of that what is that that casts out fear okay with fear comes torment right fear of man fear of future fear of people fear of you know whatever but this perfect love of god kind of erases or pushes out that fear okay so uh it sets us in a way it sets us free okay look at all the things that the perfect love of god the agape of god sets us free from or releases us from okay um it releases us from guilt shame condemnation okay ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4 Okay. Ephesians one and verse four. Um, what does it say? It says, he, "Yeah, of the world, that we should be holy and without blameless before Him in love." So it says that that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, right? Before Him in love. so this is the reason for which he chose us so which means that uh, in love you know all the other things like blame and uh, uh, you know all those things are actually removed um all in, let's say all impurities are actually removed because he chose us and he wants us to be in in him in love okay um verse 6 verse 6 again says to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved okay so he he has accepted us now that's a i don't know about acceptance acceptance is a you know it's a big thing right so normally uh, you know as a child the child wants to be accepted by the parents you know wants to feel loved accepted attention right if you if you notice um the kids who are actually they start moving around and you know crawling and all that you know at that stage also they want the attention of the parents they want you know they do a lot of things to get the attention you know they might say look 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 what i drew look what i did and they want the you know the people to say wow fantastic they want the acceptance and approval now if they don't get it now they they try and get it in a negative way right so they might break something right they do some naughty things by which at least some attention you know the parents are show, showing attention right they do it in a negative way also uh so this act- acceptance right from the beginning right maybe you're a, a a teenager the teenager wants to feel accepted want to wants to feel accepted by his peers or his or her peers and the group of friends you know whom he esteems very highly right the peers now, i want to be f- part of this group i don't want to be out of this group therefore you know the person feels what is called peer pressure right the pressure to feel do something in order to feel accepted do something in order to feel loved and so on so what happens when we know that we are accepted by god loved by god unconditionally then it's actually sets us free from all these kinds of unnecessary pressures right you feel you feel okay you it, it gives you a sense of security you are secure in yourself because you are accepted by him loved by him 
okay uh the next thing you know uh, 1 john 4:9 uh talks about the fact that uh, let's just read that verse 1 john 4 and verse 9 it says that in in this the love of god was manifested towards us that god had sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him in this is love not that we loved god but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins beloved if god so loves us we also ought to love one another okay so um you know it, it says that he loved us even before we knew him or loved him right it says he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins so we were well we were yet sinners that's what we read in romans so so which means that um you know when we receive this kind of love it frees us from a performance mentality okay now uh, you know when, when we say performance mentality it means that okay i don't have to do anything to prove to god or you know to make sure that he loves me right so many times we think because of how we you know how we uh certain things like when it comes to spiritual disciplines as well right when it comes to let's say reading the word okay reading the word is good it's necessary right it's like a lifeline for the believer right the lord said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god why because it nourishes the believer you know the it is sowing to the spirit right but if we think that if i you know stop reading then god does not love me okay now you know I, i'm saying this very carefully because sometimes you know it can be misunderstood right yeah if you uh, reading the word is necessary for us but does god love you because you read the word because you read those five chapters but somehow we we think like that oh today i read ah uh, god loves me i'm so today? today yeah today i prayed more and uh, yeah i fasted i prayed and so i'm loved by god so that is see you, doing those right things deal with things in the flesh deals with you know all those things and we maybe you know the the word that you read just cleansed your mind you know uh scripture talks about the entrance of the word gives light gives understanding to the simple and because of that understanding a lot of fears may be left because of that faith maybe a lot of things left and you're feeling freer you're feeling that liberty right in your spirit but that does not mean that god loves you any more or any less than yesterday okay so so that's the thing so when we get an understanding oh i'm loved by god then that sets me free i don't have to do anything in order to prove to god god you need to love me more because i did this right um that, but that also yeah you have a question yeah you, you can use the mic so like we can't oh, we uh, can't like we don't need to do anything in order for god to love us right like spiritual disciplines and all but to have a fellowship with him we have to do right or even if we don't do still we have fellow we'll be in fellowship with him no the thing is uh, you know he is he is put in place to do things like prayer worship which is which are all good things for us right uh we draw near to him in prayer we draw near to him uh, and uh, uh in in reading the word our faith is being built up a wrong understanding or strongholds in the mind are broken so he's put all these things for us so when we keep away these things are getting affected for sure right i'm not experiencing the you know the the outcome of or the benefit of reading the word that's the thing but does god still love me yes he does yeah and his um his in his love uh, you know he wants me to grow up he wants me to be strong he wants me to have victory and all that um yeah right so it's a, it's a very fine line okay then what else uh 
you know from all sense of unworthiness worthlessness uh from all sense of being a um, slave or being trapped you know um so we are actually released from all that because of god's love it's a simple thing you know that jesus loves us it's a very simple statement but it's a very profound you know it has very profound impact uh to a person because they have, they are accepted unconditionally loved unconditionally and you know all these things um uh, all these things are fall away you know all these things are released from us all these things fall away from us okay so receiving the father's love is a very important thing right okay second one okay first one is intimacy love the second one is identity okay so uh, another very important pillar that we need to be rooted in in order to journey into emotional wholeness is the identity that we have okay so everybody searches for identity and uh, and sometimes they come to this place of thinking that okay if i have this if i have more of this enough of this then you know then i am somebody right so like in the world it's like that right if you have so much of material possessions if you have this kind of success then you are somebody then then you are a person of worth then you are a person of importance whereas if you don't have any of this then you are a nobody okay but we 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 sometimes we take that in into our relationship with god also right we say okay if i do these things only then do i have do i become a person of worth okay but christ has already done something for us and he's giving us a sense of worth right he's giving us a sense of uh, worth he's giving us a sense of identity of who we are right so so this thing is very important uh, whatever we studied in the first semester you know about who we are in christ who what we have become in christ uh, the fact that we are justified that we are washed by his blood um, that we have become the righteousness of god in christ jesus right so these are things that we need to remember and it, we should never forget because every time we see you know why do people fall one of the reasons is they forget who they are you know or satan has uh, conveniently you know kind of blocked their minds to this truth of who they are the fact that they are sons and daughters of god the fact that they have a open communication relationship with god right the fact that they have authority over the demons over the enemy right they they are loved by him unconditionally so the minute we forget that we walk differently we behave differently and we fall right many times we open the door to sin because of the fact that we have forgotten who we are you know our identity right okay so we need to be strong in our identity okay so this would uh, lead us into a place of wholeness okay so what what happens uh, you know it it really changes the way we relate to god and when we have a strong sense of identity right when we know that we are sons and daughters when we know there's a great reassurance right so the way we relate to god we know that okay i don't i'm not a slave i he is my heavenly father i can walk in and i can ask i can talk to him right uh, there's no formality right so he has made a way like what we see in hebrews 4 uh, and it talks about the fact that we can come boldly to the throne of grace right so all that changes because of our identity in christ right the way we look at ourselves we change right we are not constantly blaming condemning uh putting ourselves down and saying we are worthless because christ says okay you are of worth you are worth so much that i died on the cross so therefore we change the way we look at ourselves okay uh the we change the way we relate to others other people you know whether we don't need to have a superiority complex okay what does superiority complex mean i'm the boss all the time and I, i need to constantly do something to show you i'm the boss you know which means i i might try to you know put you down cut you down huh? sorry dominate uh, you know i want to have the last word i want to show you that i'm the boss i'm in control right? 
that's a superiority thing right inferiority is just the opposite of that okay i am nothing i am nothing right i don't have anything i am nothing i'm worthless uh, everybody is more talented everybody is has something everybody is loved by god but i'm i'm of no worth so it's inferiority both are wrong both are bad right and in the way we relate to people that changes because god has given us worth so there's no need to be insecure there's no need for me to prove myself to be a person of worth right there's no need to dominate anything or anyone in order to show my worth i'm hey, to say to say that i'm special i don't have to do anything to show right also i don't have to constantly you know put myself down because god has lifted me up okay so that is what identity does right it, it makes us secure as a person right so you walk confidently not arrogantly not boastful but you walk confidently with the confidence christ gives us you know so it changes the way we relate to others changes the way we relate to life situations you know, definitely against the, the powers of darkness and so on okay so uh, you know so these are some things that we can uh, you know the who we are in christ truth or the truth of identity um, you know again reiterates the fact that we are a child of god you are a new creation you abide in him you are alive with a new life in christ that you are a heir and a joint heir with christ you are assured of all promises right we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places we are delivered and you know these are all in christ promises right in christ truths right so it uh, so these are some things that uh, you know if you if you see that uh, the, the the enemy tries to hit at these things hit at the identity in order to destroy it right if you look at the temptation that the lord jesus faced okay every time satan would come and ask that question what is the question that he started it with if you are the son of god what is that statement identity okay are you really son of god if you are the son of god then why do why don't you do this right so every for us also you know we we, we know that this this gets attacked right our identity with that we are children of the most high god that gets attacked all the time so this truth that we are yeah you know we are blessed with all the blessings we are delivered enriched established etc you know then all these uh, there are references to each of these statements right so we need to you know if we are not strong in this we need to remind ourselves okay when we are feeling down we need to remind ourselves you know it's good to ask ourselves why am i feeling down now right why am i feeling upset just think about it you know ask why am i like samus asks you no know, why are you cast down on my soul something that he asks he's talking to himself why are you cast down and then he says hope in god for i will yet trust him right so it's it's good to be aware why am i feeling bad am i feeling bad because somebody is doing well am i feeling bad because you know i'm i'm comparing myself in an unhealthy manner am i feeling bad because you know many things it's it's good to ask ourselves and remind ourselves of this truth remind ourselves of this truth you know saying that okay i i need a shift in thinking i can't continue thinking like this and expect to live a healthy life if i'm used to thinking like this i need to change right because this is who i am i'm loved by god i'm accepted by god you know many times we feel a little yeah you know what let's say uh not up to it you know cer- maybe certain tasks maybe certain you know ministry or ministry opportunity we, we don't feel up to it right we because in our own reasoning in our own eyes you know, what, what did the spice you know the 10 spice who went you remember one of the statements that they said what did they say yeah so they said we are like grasshoppers right which means that they are there are giants and we are like grasshoppers like insects but if you what is the second part of it he said he said in our own eyes okay not in the giant's eyes not in you know 
anyone else's eyes but in our own eyes we are like grasshoppers which means in our own estimation in our own reflection we we feel that we are like you know we are like grasshoppers okay so which means that in our own estimation sometimes we we estimate ourselves wrongly okay but we need to estimate or esteem ourselves the way um you know according to the truth of what has happened to us in Christ Jesus okay so that that really liberates us frees us and immediately changes our thinking and then you realize that hey this this kind of depression this kind of heaviness you realize that hey, that's that's leaving you know that all oh, it has left already because i've shifted i've changed my thinking okay so this needs to be part of our lifestyle right so first pillar about the love of god the fact we are loved accepted you know along with that love we are released from so many things second one is about identity same thing you know when we are strong in our identity of who we are uh, again you know it puts to rest so many insecurities and uh, you know uh, we we walk in in a different way we walk in a different way in the sense we we live and our behavior changes the way we relate to god the way we relate to people the way we look at ourselves the way we relate to ourselves everything changes and becomes healthier okay so there's a lot of healing that happens the third thing is releasing the past yeah sure people who are unbelievers uh, so when they were uh, I mean, when they were depressed in their you know and then how we can relate identity to them like how we can Okay. Yeah. So, person doesn't believe in Christ. Uh, so, but they are feeling down and depressed and so on. We can share the same truths, right? But the person has to kind of internalize it and receive it. We can share the same thing, saying, you know, Jesus loves you, but they need to be a recipient of it, receive that truth that Jesus loves them, and. Uh, Uh, and maybe you know even receive jesus christ in their lives so that all the other things become applicable the fact that they are new creation the fact that they are you know um but this fact that they are loved by god even when they don't know him or when they have not called upon him the, the fact that they are loved by god is a reality is a truth and right? god so loved the world right while we were yet sinners so it's a reality which is applicable for them so if they would just receive that it can bring a lot of healing that they are loved by him that they are esteemed by jesus so much that he went to the cross on their behalf and it can be a uh, i mean a, a very radical transformation in their lives that's how people's lives have changed lives have changed right they just one aspect which is the love of god completely change them they want to know more about this god who loved them so much and that completely changed their lives right yeah the motivational speakers uh i mean in the colleges they'll go to students and they'll speak and there are, there are some people who are christians also the professors and they'll speak according to the people if they go to college they'll speak in the context of students not in the sense of god but they'll interchange the points is that okay to do i've seen many we've uh, also gone for ministries right uh, in the schools and colleges they say don't use the name of jesus okay <laughs> don't uh, uh yeah don't say uh bible uh, but but you you can share content from the word but don't say this is the only truth so sometimes we have restrictions like restrictions like that constraints like that and then we still go ahead and share but um with the hope that okay in a public forum we share it and then hopefully you know uh individually maybe they can reach out and we can talk talk to them because in individual conversation when they say hey this is i can say this is how this is what i believe this is what happened to me i can testify and say you know it's only because of jesus so so some people are like that but this motivational thing is uh, is you know excluding christ excluding god's love 
to say that um you know i am special i am special anyway you know in, in a sense it's true they are special to whom right so uh and uh, to what end why right so when you when you take god out of the picture it kind of uh, yeah so is it for this life only what is it that makes you special you know all those things um when with with christ the picture is complete with god the picture is complete hey you're a new creation or you know you're fearfully and wonderfully made uh you know but when you take god god out of the picture then it's kind of a very poor substitute but at the same time a lot of things are true huh <laughs> i won't say maybe it's 80% truth <laughs> yeah so that's the thing it has its place it has its impact on the soul you know so you when you say get up and say hey this is going to be a new day this is going to be a great day uh yeah it, it does impact but the lasting change is when you say okay because this is the day the lord has made he is in this day he is with me then you know then the, that that's the full truth right and uh, truth sets us free yeah okay okay the third thing third pillar is releasing the past okay so we we i think we dealt with this uh, about forgiveness forgiving forgiving others releasing forgiveness uh forgiving ourselves right that's the most difficult thing sometimes uh, even others we can forgive but forgiving ourselves it's very you know sometimes it's a big challenge okay so now whatever has happened has happened okay now we cannot even we cannot go back and change things we cannot but we can definitely you know uh, change the present and uh, we can maybe restore things in the present if possible right so we need to actually release the past when we say release the past which means that you know these things will be in our memory right whatever has happened we can't just forget it we can't just one day you know delete no the human mind is capable of remembering a lot of information storing a lot of information but the fact when we say release the past we're saying okay we're not you know i'm not going to be tormented by it i'm not going to be troubled by it i'm not going to blame myself over and over again by the past right whatever has happened i bring it under the blood of jesus and there we know that there is nothing more powerful so it is covered by the blood of jesus when it is covered settled dealt with i'm not going to dwell on it yes i might remember maybe i go to some place you know even now uh suppose i go to a particular city like mangalore and i remember how i was you know as a as a believer you know as a spirit filled flesh walking <laughs> believer how i was so but i'm thankful i i look at some places where i stayed in and i thank god god you changed me okay so we will be we will be you know kind of rem, uh, reminded of our past but we don't have to dwell we don't have to punish ourselves we don't have to stay in guilt and condemnation which of which we have been forgiven okay so that is what we mean by releasing the past it's very important because our present gets affected if we don't release the past our present and our future like it's like oh, i get into a boat i want to sail but the boat is still tied to the shore right i'm doing all the right things i'm getting into the boat i'm looking at the map i've got a map oh this is where i need to go this is a place wonderful adventure i packed for the journey everything i've got into the boat and i'm rowing rowing and rowing but no progress because the boat is still anchored to the the shore right so i need to release the past i need to do that we need to do that in order to move forward okay so if you don't release the past we we hold ourselves as prisoners to the past and not we don't enjoy the present right nor do we enjoy the future right so um so it's it's very very important okay uh, the examples we see is jacob you know jacob um you know that he manipulated got the birthright from esau 
when he so was at his weakest moment he was hungry and so on so then after many years now he's going to meet Isa and Isa is coming with this big company of people and uh, that night Jacob cries out to God right he wrestles with God he has an encounter with God and and uh, God changed his name right he changed his name to Israel right Israel so he, in a, what is that that means that okay i'm giving you a new identity now you're a prince you know, you're a prince with god so new identity new future so don't dwell on the past don't dwell on that old name here's a new name that i give you okay so so the thing is this that we will be reminded sometimes and when we think about it okay it might bring some fear some kind of regret but then you remind yourself again about who you have become okay about your new identity and that let that uh, change your present and future you know the uh, a good example that we see is the life of joseph okay um very difficult very traumatic time as a slave uh, in potiphar's house uh, wrongly accused put in prison etc okay so this is how joseph testifies right jo uh, genesis 41 uh, verse 51 Joseph called the name of the first born Manasseh okay he says for god has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house okay the second son he calls his friend for god has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction okay so every time he calls his children Manasseh Ephraim come here do that he is reminding himself that god has made me forget my toil um god has caused me to be fruitful right um the uh, another version says like this uh, and to the first he gave the name manasseh for he said god has taken away from me all memory of my hard life and of my father's house you know the, the all those bitter memory and hurt and pain um god has removed that okay okay um so so much so that he came to a place you know he was healed so much that he came to a place of forgiving his brothers uh when he had the ability to actually punish them you know he was he was a top man in egypt right he could have done anything he could have taken vengeance on his brothers right and we and we see so many things happening in families right um like when it comes to issues of let's say property or finances or, and things like that um so many things you know double crossing cheating forgetting that they are actually you know of the same family like we see those things happening whereas here you know despite a lot of things going wrong because of his family because of his directly because of his family members a lot of things going wrong but he still you know is in a place of let's say we can say he's in a place of inner wholeness or inner health where he says you know i forgive am i in the place of god right uh you meant it for bad you meant it for evil but god turned it around for good right and he is able to have that fresh and new perspective because he was able to let go okay so this letting go is very important for us okay so so the question is this you know in what areas are we holding on right and i'm sure god will show us you know the holy spirit will show us okay this is one area where you've not let go you know you you know you have to let go right this is one area where you're still struggling you know you're not you're holding on which is affecting your present which is affecting your future right so uh, something that you know that will help us to let go is this okay um we must actually be willing or we should give up our right to you know to hold this past against god maybe or against people or against ourselves okay we be, sometimes when you are hurt you say okay i have the right to be angry i have the right to be angry i have the right to be angry with um, this person i have the right to punish that person why because they did something wrong yeah i have the right to be angry with god because he disappointed me he did not answer my prayers 
he did not give me the breakthrough i have right to be angry with him right okay i have I, you know i respect god all that but i'm inside i'm angry okay so if we would give up that right to be angry you know saying okay i have the right to be feel the, you know to feel this way about this person i have the right you know for all you know you know it it can it can be a if you look at it right it it might seem like the right thing right in a worldly sense it might seem like the, yeah you have a right to be angry because they did all this against you you know the least you can do okay you don't want to take revenge but at least you can be angry at least you can be offended right it might seem like ah oh, this is something that i can you know i'm only human right but if we would give up that right okay like we see all these examples especially in joseph's life he gave up that that right from what we see that he gave up the right to be angry with his brothers who had done this and therefore you know he he, he was walking in that healing of emotions and healing of the past right okay um okay uh, specifically you know we can give up our right to say god where were you when all these things were happening okay. why did you permit all this to happen right if we would give up that right second thing you know against other people okay why did you do this or you know i hate you for what you did for me i hate you for what you you know done this uh in my life right the least i can do is at least hate them the least i can do is hold this you know grudge against them right if we would give up that right even okay see that is what is dying to the flesh it feels so bad right? how can i just give up this right you know how can i give up this right to have, hold this grudge because the flesh is actually very strong saying you have to hold on you have to, you are offended you know or it it can even be like you know don't you have your pride don't you have your sense of pride right self respect like how can you not be angry okay but if we would give that up you know then we would release the past okay then another thing that would help us is you know uh, to say i'll never forgive myself for what i did i'll never forgive myself for what i said i'll never forgive myself for what i did because what i did or what i said it had so much of consequences right um like i i think i was sharing right uh, about how i found it very difficult to forgive myself because of my 12th standard marks right 10th standard did very well 12th standard did poorly so um I find it very difficult to forgive right hey a lot of opportunities a lot of chances um you know a lot of encouragement and yet you did not make the best use of it right so i found it very difficult to forgive myself right but i had to do that in order to move on uh in life yeah okay so okay uh secondly what we can do is to place our past in god's hands okay saying god or you know what i cannot revisit i cannot change but lord you know can i put it in your hands right can you help whatever has been wrong whatever wrong thing has been done to me maybe it's injustice maybe i did not get what i was supposed to rightfully get lord but you're the one who who can turn things around you are the vindicator you are the god of righteousness and justice so i place this maybe this person this event whatever things that have happened lord i i'm just releasing right I'm placing in your hands uh please change right so he's a sovereign god all powerful one all knowing one and we can say okay so the first thing is the that we give up the right right uh, and then we, we release the past we give up the right to be to be angry we give up the right to be um, you know to take revenge we give up our right to hold a grudge even right we give up our right second one place it in god's hand thirdly release forgiveness okay this is something that we saw okay release forgiveness to all 
who have said something, who are offended, who have done anything uh, for us, right? And then, uh, and then the most important thing is this, like, right? that we need to stand firm with our decision. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that if I've let go, I've let go. You know, I will have opportunities to pick it up again, right? Through people who might say, you know, I heard that this happened to you. So what are you doing about it? And in our own, in my own life, um, that happened, right? There's a, there was a person who actually, um, uh, you know, uh, with, with regard to some property, is what happened. Some court case and everything. He was actually uh, known to one of my relatives, but then he turned against that person and then, you know, filed a case and in order to take the property, right? And uh, and the thing was this: the case was so strong that finally it went in their favor. Um, so um, the thing is, like people still ask, right? Even even in the real estate agents, they ask, "Sir, I, I believe this happened. This person, after all those years, so I have to make up my mind and say, okay, yes, this is true, but that's a closed chapter." No, let's not even go there. Let's a close chapter, right? And in our hearts, in our minds, at least personally for me, I had to make the decision and say, okay, God, I release forgiveness. You know, bless that person. Um, and the thing is, that person is a uh, in ministry. Okay, so so all the more, you know, uh, you feel uh, how can a person do that? But then you know, you release forgiveness, bless that person, bless the ministry. God, you, you know, you bring about your justice in your way, in your time. Just release that person, right? So we need to stand firm um, to, you know, this decision that we have made to give up. Okay, okay, we'll uh, stop here and then we'll come back.